hook up, so just to let you know that. There we go. Live we are. <clears throat> so what's been going on up in your neck of the woods? Well, I uh, had an in interesting day out hunting yesterday, and uh, birds have gotten tough. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that today. But, uh, Good deal. This, this fog and uh, frost is just really interesting. So I don't know what it's like <laughs> down in your neck of the woods, but... Yeah, we got heavy duty, heavy, heavy frost and the fog last night. We, uh, uh, my wife and I were down in uh, the Black Hills for a few days this week since it's so nice. My cows are out on the uh, winter grazing and, you know, haven't had to feed yet with, it's just been a super open winter for us. And, uh, we said, you know what, let's take a couple days. And we just went and kind of messed around in the hills. On the way there home, a lot of people down there. No, nobody down there. It's during yeah. the week. It's just very, very nice. You know, just really slow pace. But on the way back, we got north of Belfouche, probably about fifteen miles, and we hit fog, and it was thirty, forty miles an hour from there all the way to the ranch. It was so slow. <laughs> what time of day was that? Uh, right at sunset. We hit it right at sunset, yeah. about four four o'clock last night, and and got home exceptionally later than we usually do yeah it was a interesting day out in the field that's for sure i bet yeah yeah only a few more weeks left here a couple weeks left of uh pheasant season and archery season i gotta get my bow tag filled i think i found out i found the deer i want to go after finally found one <sighs> Well, I thought you uh, you bagged you already bagged a deer. You wanted to go after that was a dandy. I got a rifle. Yeah, well, that was my rifle deer. Take yeah, that was a good one. So, yeah, there. I've got to do, do a little bow hunting too. The the deer just absolutely stopped moving, and um, yeah, they're really tough, just like everything else did. So, uh, but but you hate to ask for uh, tough weather to make the hunting better, right? Right. I uh, I I'm. I saw a thing on Facebook this morning. It's like, not sure if we're having an open winter or if Mother Nature's going to just lay it to us here in January, February. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Well, from a game standpoint, Scott, I always think if you get through November and then you get into December, that late February, mid-February type uh, sunshine opens those fields up. So, um, you know, I it can get it can get pretty tough, but I just think from a standpoint of that prolonged winter is what yeah. always scares me. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. All right. Well, Chuck down in KGFX. Good morning. Good to have you with Waylon. Good morning. Also, uh, Karen in Mobridge, ready to rock and roll. Thank you. Good, good, good. <clears throat> well, I made the investment and, uh, bought a thermal imaging scope, Ron. Still They're good. interesting, aren't they? I bet for Kai, you were uh, you were thinking you got something there. I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, because uh, it's uh, been tough hunting during the daytime, anyway. Right now, how proud are they of those scopes? Oh, about four grand proud right now. Mm. You can, uh, you know, there's yeah. a, there's always better ones than the one I got, of course, but. I figured put a suppressor I, on and a, yep and a, yeah you got you got yourself a what yeah. <laughs> and the, here's the worst part four thousand dollar scope thousand dollar suppressor on a two hundred and sixty dollar two twenty three rifle <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna ask you what what are you uh <laughs> I'm just, yeah well I'm starting with that I don't you know I'm I know my property pretty well and I know where I'm gonna go hunt and use this but I'm not going to try to put it on a rifle that reaches out past 500 yards because I want to start off on right. the range stuff. And, but it's been tough. It's been hard calling. It's been uh, my snares. I haven't got nothing in my snares. I think maybe one or two coyotes is all. It's just been uh, very difficult this fall here with uh, as open as it is. You know, I had a guy do a bunch of trapping in for me last spring and I called him you know, last night, in fact, and, about coming out and trapping after season's all done here. And he says, he just, um, the fur market is just for raccoons and all those yeah. animals. has just gone completely. You can't, can't get rid of them. He said, it's, uh, 
know if that's what you're saying on, on coyotes as well. Yeah. What's coyote price doing? Coyote price is still, it's about 20% less than it was last year, but coyotes are the only thing that fur buyers want, that anybody is. And and it's still it's just the only one that has, and we can talk about that. I actually stopped at Star of the West Hat Company. Uh, got a uh, cowboy hat donated, a really nice one, custom made for the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame fundraiser we're doing in February. And he said the same thing. You know, the beaver felt. It was like I can trap beaver all day long on the Little Missouri, and I won't get five dollars for him. But what a custom hat he is made out of uh, is going to be is six hundred dollars. You know, so. Somebody's making money somewhere on it. It's definitely not us, but coyotes. Are the yeah, well, that's thing. what I was. I got a couple of beavers that just caused a lot of destruction again this summer and fall, and that's kind of what I was really yeah. after, hoping he was gonna be hungry to come out and get. But he, I don't know. It's tough. Yeah, it's a it's a dying industry of people that the country was built on here. So uh, we got forty five seconds here. Stations forty five seconds on mark. And we'll get rocking from there. <clears throat> oh, boy. Nothing but coyote tournaments going on for the next few months here. So, a lot of those coming up. All right. Turn you down a little bit, Ron, here. Stand by. Stations, 15 seconds. 15 seconds on mark. Morning, Wayne. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Saturday edition of Dakota Prairie Outdoors. Good to have you along. I'm Scott Bachmeyer, and for the next hour, we have the privilege to talk outdoors. If you'd like to call in, join in on the conversations, comments, you can do so. The toll-free number is 888-932-5682. That's 888-9-DAKOTA if you want to remember it that way, too. You can also text me at 701-425-6651 or message me through social media. Like right now, a few people uh, joining me on my YouTube channel, Dakota Prairie Outdoors Radio on YouTube. You can also text through that as well. My first half of the show here, I have Mr. Ron Ness, President of the North Dakota Petroleum Council. Good morning, Ron. What's been going on today? Oh, Ron, do we have you here with me? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, there Sorry, you go. I was uh, <laughs> just relocating a little bit. I said it's another uh, frosty, foggy morning in North Dakota. Yeah. Uh, I was out yesterday and it's kind of uh, it's kind of an interesting way to hunt right now in this in this weather is um so if anybody's out there thinking about whether they should go out today hunting pheasants in this uh frost and uh is really really cool so it's really challenging right now as you know but it is really really interesting when they get up out of that frosty grass you know when you get into this far into the season uh, especially when you're going after pheasants they get a little smarter don't they they start getting up a little bit further away they really do and uh we've been out quite a bit and last weekend i had a a big group and we were down uh southwestern north dakota and we surrounded a couple of fields with 20 to 25 hunters and you know, there are a lot of birds in the area scott i i think the resource is recovering pretty well and we uh i think it, i think we shot 102 days oh, um God. and uh well yesterday we walked there were a handful of us and we walked and walked and walked and uh we ended up uh, i was kind of i was kind of those hard luck uh, hard luck days scott where you go all day and you uh you don't get one bird in front of you. The other guy's got their limits and we were all done. And, <laughs> and my little, uh, my little English cockers completely froze up yesterday in that, in that frosty grass. And it was cold down there. It was 15 to 19 degrees. And, yeah. um, about the end of the last walk, they froze up. So I had to head to the truck and then all the roosters started getting up. Of course, when they got them trapped at the end, but, uh, it was, it was a really fun day to be out. Isn't and, it, uh, you know, when you're talking about taking 25 people pheasant hunting and uh, and almost everybody getting their limit, it's uh, it's got to say something for that person and how they kind of work their land to make sure that there's that habitat for those pheasant out there. I mean, it's that's a that's kind of a fun little story to see come out. It is the places that uh, you're you're hunting this time of year where they've got that kind of bird generally uh, lots of lots of habitat. A um, couple of cornfields last year that you know weren't planted this year, so 
uh, lots of weeds in one of them. Uh, another one was actually hailed out canola field. And, um, but those birds are coming out of, uh, out of grass in the adjacent areas. And that's the thing I think as you, as you travel out south and west of Bismarck, you know, you, you just don't see the CRP that we used to have. So the birds are where people are really, you know, thinking through their process and how they're going to, how they're going to find extra spots for grass and they're going to put trees in and they're going to, it's all about the habitat at this point. And you can see it when you're out there. Yeah. And of course, an open year like this, you can get out all you want. Absolutely. You can walk, walk, walk. And Yeah. Well, and not only that, it's just great. You know, a lot of people uh, enjoy a little bit of snow on the ground because it does bunch up the pheasants in certain areas. But when you're talking an open winter like this and uh good habitat and, and uh, were you hunting at the same place south of uh, Gascoigne is... Same. Uh, no, we oh, okay. were, uh, we, we were, we were more over by new England and, okay. um, actually up North, we found some really good, good stuff up North of the interstate as well. So, excellent. um, we've seen the grouse numbers this year in my, uh, across the ranch here. Holy cow. You don't see many grouse hunters anymore, but one of these days you should, uh, uh, come down and we can, uh, go chase some of those. Well, if uh, you're going to eat them all, I'll come down. Hey, but uh, I don't know about no, that. I, I I do like shooting grouse, and uh, I haven't perfected that way to cook them yet. But a lot of my friends have, so that's a good thing. But you know what I'm seeing, Scott? Also, is I'm seeing a lot of partridge just about good. everywhere we go. There's a, there's a big flock of partridge, and of course, um, these pheasants right now. It, it is interesting. You said how smart they get, and I had a couple guys here, and from out of state, and they just absolutely run and if they can run they run and flush uh you've got to just really try to squeeze them and pinch them and but that frost yesterday they held a little bit better in that frost you yeah. had to you had to work hard to find them but uh, it, was, it was really interesting that's uh, just a good time to get out and, and and go hunting like this like like i said we only have a few more weeks left and uh let's see one two two and a half weeks of uh pheasant and archery hunting in our area here ron so uh got to make best of it every single day i got to get my archery yep. take field yet same here but just like uh with pheasants that that nice weather has changed the deer patterns and i know the uh the geese have gotten really hard to hard to decoy as well they've they've gotten pretty they've been they've been hit pretty hard and right now without a little bit of weather they're they're kind of gotten pretty weary so it's uh it's a great opportunity you got to get out there you got to work a little bit harder but uh how can you complain about weather like this and still the ability to get out so we're gonna Absolutely. we're gonna we're gonna take advantage of these next two and a half weeks i'll guarantee that <laughs> you know I, one of the reasons i always want to have you on here is because you and i had a discussion years and years and years ago when you first started coming on to be a sponsor about uh you know the petroleum council oil and gas industry and 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 wildlife together and i have to bring this story up here that i saw yesterday on social media i don't know if you've seen this uh the north face company have you seen that story I have not. Okay. So here, here's it. It's all over social media. Believe what you want here. But uh, there's a West Texas company, oil and gas company, that for every year, for a bonus, they get something for their employees. And there's like 100 and some employees. And what they wanted to do this year was go to North Face and have jackets made with you know their logo embroidered in and uh, ordered up 100 of them. And the company, North Face, as we all know, uh, supposedly an outdoor company, right? Uh, they called them up and said no. We don't want our North Face brand connected with the oil and gas industry and uh, turned them away. And, of course, another company jumped on that right away and, and helped them out. But still, it, 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 the reason I'm bringing this up is whether it's hunting, farming and ranching or oil and gas and how well all of those work together. We still need to get our story out to a lot of people and explain like the North Face company, they wouldn't be making those jackets if it wasn't for oil and gas. <laughs> and uh, so how does a person get that education out there, Ron? I mean, here we're preaching probably to the choir around North and South Dakota, but I'm also on uh, on YouTube and a lot of people outside of the area do click on and watch that as a rerun. So how could we educate folks on the oil and gas side of things and how important it is in everyday products? Well, Scott, I, I think that uh, we are preaching to the choir, but I think we better understand that agriculture and energy and, and producing states like North Dakota and, and not unlike uh, those same people that, that don't want to, uh, you know, put an oil and gas company on their, on their brand. Uh, also, uh, they're the ones that are trying to, you know, limit the availability of ammo. Uh, yeah. There's some stories out there about what they're doing with gun manufacturers. 
And um, it's interesting you say that because I was, I was heading south yesterday and I stopped in Mandan and filled up my tank of gas and my, uh, you know, my, my, my old hunting truck that's not worth the wheels that it's, that's running on it. And I thought, you know, I put $42 of gas in it today. And I thought, you know, just think about, it. I'm going to drive this truck virtually all day today and it's going to get me where I need to go. And it, here I am at this gas pump. And just like that story you're talking about, that, that North Face, Loathing is made from petrochemicals, which yeah. comes from, you know, natural gas liquids, which is, there is such a disconnect. And we are seeing this Ron, more and more. We're up against the brakes. Hold on to that thought. We're going to come back and we're going to continue this discussion here. Ron Ness uh, with the North Dakota Petroleum Council is my guest. We'll be back more with Dakota Prairie Outdoors Saturday edition right after these messages. <laughs> Join Pfeiffer's Auctioneers for the annual Upper Midwest Equipment Auction. This online auction begins to close on December 8th at Pfeiffer's.com and features livestock and hay equipment, semi-trucks and trailers, exceptional construction equipment with low-houred payloaders, skid steers, excavators, and more. And this premier Pfeiffer's Auction showcases an uncomparable offering of like-new case, Kubota, and versatile tractors from 150 to 550 horsepower, some with less than 100 hours. Full inventory details and online bidding is available at Pfeiffer's.com. Dakota Community Bank and Trust, Trust Advisors. Use your wealth to support your family and those you care about. We know you have worked hard over the years to accumulate wealth. We want to make sure your legacy reaches your heirs as you intend, either by will, by trust, or by beneficiary designation. We emphasize flexibility to meet your goals and discipline to achieve them. Visit dakotacommunitybank.com. At Dakota Community Bank and Trust, that's what we do. Our outdoor heritage is important to North Dakotans, and the state's oil and natural gas industry is advancing the possibilities for conservation. The North Dakota Outdoor Heritage Fund receives up to $40 million per biennium from oil and natural gas taxes. The industry is reclaiming land for future generations, and it's developing our state's natural resources in harmony with our great outdoors and wildlife. North Dakota Oil and Natural Gas, advancing the possibilities. Brought to you by the North Dakota Petroleum Foundation. MoPro Guide Service, the best on Lake Oahe. Brent and his staff will give you the most enjoyable fishing experience, always having the latest in electronics, gear, and the most comfortable Lund boat on the water. Fish with somebody who lives in Mobridge, South Dakota, the heart of Lake Oahe. If you need a place to stay, the Morest Motel has newly updated rooms with free internet, a family-owned and operated business. Go to oahewalleyes.com. That's O-A-H-E, walleyes.com, for the best fishing experience Lake Oahe has to offer. Rockin' 7W has all the panels you need. Freestanding panels, windbreak panels, feeder panels, and the original protester panel. If you don't know what that is, it's a sort panel that makes sorting calves from a cow a breeze. You can do it in a fraction of time with just one person on foot or horseback. You can custom order sizes to fit your current operation, or you can start from scratch. Rockin' 7W also does tree size trailers, mobile welding, and custom cattle hauling. Call Justin at Rockin' 7W at 701-206-1030. That's 701-206-1030. Rockin' 7W, the farmer and rancher's go-to guy. Western Frontier Insurance. Agents that understand you, your needs, and the community. Whether you're looking for coverage on your farm, ranch, home, or auto, you can trust that Western Frontier Insurance will find you a combination of price and coverage that works for you. No fancy jingles, no talking boxes or animals, just good neighbors helping to keep you covered. Western Frontier Insurance. Offices in Hazen, Washburn, and Wilded. Join Pfeiffer's Auctioneers for the annual Upper Midwest Equipment Auction. This online auction begins to close on December 8th at Pfeiffer's.com and features livestock and hay equipment, semi-trucks and trailers, exceptional construction equipment with low-houred payloaders, skid steers, excavators, and more. And this premier Pfeiffer's Auction showcases an uncomparable offering of like-new case, Kubota, and versatile tractors from 150 to 550 horsepower, some with less than 100 hours. Full inventory details and online bidding is available at Pfeiffer's.com. Our outdoor heritage is important to North Dakotans, and the state's oil and natural gas industry is advancing the possibilities for conservation. The North Dakota Outdoor Heritage Fund receives up to $40 million per biennium from oil and natural gas taxes. The industry is reclaiming land for future generations, and it's developing our state's natural resources in harmony with our great outdoors and wildlife. 
North Dakota Oil and Natural Gas, advancing the possibilities. Brought to you by the North Dakota Petroleum Foundation. Dakota Community Bank and Trust provides ag loans for all stages of growth, from seed to harvest. Our expert agribusiness lending staff specializes in loans for livestock, equipment, vehicles, and operating. With our roots in agribusiness lending, you can be assured that our lending staff will provide you with prompt and reliable service. In other words, our ag loan officers will always keep your best interests in mind. Stop by your local Dakota Community Bank and Trust today. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Welcome back, everybody. It's a Saturday edition. Dakota Prairie Outdoors, KGFX and Pier and Fort Pier, KOLY and Mobridge, K Fire 550, Bismarck, Mandan, KCJB and Minot and KLTC and Dickinson. Around the world on YouTube, my channel is Dakota Prairie Outdoors Radio. Hey, I have Ron Ness, president of the North Dakota Petroleum Council. Ron, have you been watching any of the uh, NFR at all? I have not. Okay. And, and the which is kind of. You know, it's one of those things where I get the updates every morning on my uh, social media feed. But last night, you know, I've been talking about Action Motorsports on the Strip in Mandan and their uh, uh, Polaris Ag Advantage program, where if you're a farmer or rancher, you get 10% off right away when you walk into the door. All right. So that's pretty cool. If you're looking at a new ranger, general or sportsman. And last night, I seen uh, kind of that pushed on the uh, NFR and one of their breaks that they had, too. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of makes you proud when you see a company like polaris standing up for the farmer and rancher and giving them a little bit of a break because you know not always a great producing year so thank you action motorsports and mandan go see Britt today he'll text me what his uh his uh specials are today we'll see how much how many breakfasts he's going to be cooking on his new grill but uh you know before we went into the break we were just uh, discussing uh you know uh how the how the industries work together and how people we need to educate and i had to cut you off there but uh, let's continue on uh, from where you said, you know, you were discussing, you know, uh, the education side of things and then pushing this in. We we're talking about North Face and the whole works like that. But during the break, you were we were discussing this a little bit more. Also, I'll let you continue on with that, Ron. Well, Scott, it is just, you know, so ironic that, you know, these these same companies that, that are using, you know, petrochemical products or uh, or take a take a steakhouse in New York and, and the constituents that come in there and eat steak have no concept of, of what it takes for you uh, and the care of you take of the land and, and that, and those cattle in order to get that, that on their plate. And the same goes with energy and whether it be uh, coal or oil and gas or, or wind, um, we're all going to be in a situation here and we are headed there very quickly where these, um, these obstructionists, these idealists that think that, all of this stuff, they can have their soup and, uh, you know, nobody, nobody should have to have any, uh, any struggle to get it on their plate or in their, in their home. But, you know, they are now using the financing. Yeah. And, uh, this, this is also what's happening to the gun manufacturers and the bullet makers. Uh, they're going after their financers, their banks. Uh, you've seen it happen in the coal industry. Uh, we are seeing a significant attack now on the oil and gas industry across America, across the world, frankly, uh, in terms of trying to shut off capital. And, uh, you know, we better be concerned. And, and you talk about emissions and those things, uh, the emissions uh, from cattle on uh, feedlots and things like that. That is a high priority at, at people and bureaucrats behind desks at places like EPA. Uh, and those people, the, the animal rights people, are going to yeah. all migrate that direction. And, uh, you know, at some point, producing states uh, are going to have to, stand up to the north faces of the world and the companies that don't want to be associated with us and we're going to all have to uh stand up and say you know um we don't need we don't need your product either uh we'll we'll go select those just like uh, action motorsports supporting farmers and ranchers we're going to go find those people to support that support us and we have to do this collectively because it, you know you talk a lot about education scott but the one thing that i've learned about education is there's a whole group of people in the middle and the younger generation that's, that's being educated the other way, which we have to educate. But there are a whole bunch of people that have made um, obstructionism 
and, and being against all of us a profession and it's now big yeah. money and there's no educating them. We're going to have to fight. You talk about big money, you know, and you also said something I'd like to bring up again is uh, uh, producing states going against the consumer type of states. Uh, you know, you look at it here, those of us in the Dakota territory producing oil, gas, you know, farm products, uh, beef, the whole works, uh, wind, water. We have a lot of resources here. You know, you then you look just across the border to the east, and I say they're more of a consumer type of state over there. Can a guy just shut that off once in a while? They're on. Can we just shut the uh, the oil and gas off for a day and see how they like it? Boy, wouldn't that just be uh, <laughs> just be handy to be able to just uh, you know turn off the turn off the electricity switch switch yeah. for a couple hours and yeah. uh, maybe maybe uh, maybe no beef ends up going their direction, but. You know, the reality is you, you, you just can't do that. And um, but but the struggle is that you're going to eventually see, uh, you know, cheap, affordable, reliable energy, you know, to all of us in, in North Dakota. It's just always been here. It's, it's yeah. been omnipresent. But all over the world, cheap, affordable, reliable energy is is the out of, of poverty and, and sickness and and all of those things. And for what the discussions that we're having now on, on the national level under the, under the new Biden administration and putting climate and those, you know, into every, every agency, every decision, what that's going to do in, in terms of shifting the energy again, we've become a dominant energy country in the world. And do we really want to send our money again back to the Middle East and make them the dominant? And you look at, you look at wind and, and all of those things China owns owns the components that you need for wind turbines. We have to be very, very cautious. We've got to go out and find those resources, continue to use all of the above. But across North Dakota, uh, I am just seeing a uh, very significant concern that we could have 800 years supply of coal for forever. Yeah. And we could leave, uh, you know, a large chunk of the Bakken uh, undeveloped because of undercapitalization, because of the ability of, of banks and and others to discriminate against who they're going to give their money to, just like these these companies like North. They mm. say, "No, we don't want your business." Yeah, with uh, with uh, about two and a half minutes left here, Ron, you know, let's talk quickly of what COVID's been doing to a lot of the uh, fundraisers out there. You know, I was talking about the uh, North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame fundraiser in February. We're planning for it, but we don't know if we'll be able to have it yet or not. I mean, th there's a lot of that going on right now. It's really tough, Scott. Uh, this morning, I've I've got my uh, National Mule Deer Foundation board of directors, and of course, uh, we, we're great partners with the Mule Deer Foundation, and you know all of the folks in the oil and gas industry. I always say, hey, we're hunters and fishermen yeah. and landowners and and everything, but it's really tough for conservation and, and wildlife organizations out there right now. So I would encourage everybody over over the Christmas holiday to a renew your membership if you because we're not going to be able to have banquets. B they're all developing mechanisms and ways to run online raffles or other other charitable contributions. But, you know, think about uh, what that habitat means and what we're discussing today and all of the wildlife organizations. I don't care which one it is and, and all of the other charities. Uh, I encourage you to, uh, you know, give a, give a second thought and maybe put an extra check in the mail to all of them this year because uh, they are really struggling. And, and there's a lot of people that work for those organizations that, uh, uh, times are getting tough, and, yeah. and they're going to have to start making cuts just like uh, all other businesses. But that's something that those those organizations, you know, uh, survived by support of sportsmen, uh, just like you and I, Scott. You know, and you look at, uh, he said it's getting harder and harder. You can't hardly find any ammunition anymore. Certain type of uh, guns, which I got to tell you, all the organizations that I helped uh, raise money for, guns were the number one money-raising <laughs> event that we had. And it's getting harder and harder to find that. It's almost like they're coming through the back door on us here, Ron, in the outdoor industry and uh, taking away everything that we, uh, that we like and love here. So uh, with 60 Well, I think that's the moral of the story, Scott. <laughs> it's not just coal. It's not just oil. It, it's agriculture. It's, it's livestock. It's guns. It's ammo. It's hunting. Yeah. It's fishing. Uh, they uh, living in their little bubble in, in places like New York City. They, they, don't, they don't think that's the right thing to do. And, and we're going to have to fight fight for it very quickly here uh, darren up in hazen says you know it's tough for businesses to donate to charities when the government doesn't even allow them to run their business like they should and you know that, there's a whole other thing if you're limiting 
what businesses can be open or which ones are essential. That takes uh, a little bit of that profit away too. But hey, hey Ron, I got to tell you, we're very quickly, Barrel Oil, what's it up right now today? I it cracked about forty five dollars a barrel this week, which was a little bit up. So uh, I'd sure like to see another uh, ten dollars on top of that. Maybe yeah. we could uh, restore a little bit more activity. We're still producing one point two million barrels a day, Scott, which is phenomenal. Nice. But uh, the activity is is decreased in terms of new wells, and we need new wells to continue to uh, run those run those numbers. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking time on a Saturday morning, and uh, good luck to you pheasant hunting the rest of the year. Thank you, Scott. You bet. Ron Nez, North Dakota Petroleum Council. You can find more information. Just find them online, of course. Not a problem like that. Hey, I tell you what, we're going to be talking ice fishing in the second half of the program. It's going to be tough to talk about it because the guy that I'm talking to was just out on his boat open water fishing two days ago. <laughs> Is there ice? We'll find out. It's coming up next on Dakota Prairie Outdoors Radio. <laughs> Join Pfeiffer's Auctioneers for the annual Upper Midwest Equipment Auction. This online auction begins to close on December 8th at Pfeiffer's.com and features livestock and hay equipment, semi-trucks and trailers, exceptional construction equipment with low-houred payloaders, skid steers, excavators, and more. And this premier Pfeiffer's Auction showcases an uncomparable offering of like-new case, Kubota, and versatile tractors from 150 to 550 horsepower, some with less than 100 hours. Full inventory details and online bidding is available at Pfeiffer's.com. Dakota Community Bank and Trust, Trust Advisors. Use your wealth to support your family and those you care about. We know you have worked hard over the years to accumulate wealth. We want to make sure your legacy reaches your heirs as you intend, either by will, by trust, or by beneficiary designation. We emphasize flexibility to meet your goals and discipline to achieve them. Visit dakotacommunitybank.com. At Dakota Community Bank and Trust, that's what we do. Our outdoor heritage is important to North Dakotans, and the state's oil and natural gas industry is advancing the possibilities for conservation. The North Dakota Outdoor Heritage Fund receives up to $40 million per biennium from oil and natural gas taxes. The industry is reclaiming land for future generations, and it's developing our state's natural resources in harmony with our great outdoors and wildlife. North Dakota Oil and Natural Gas, advancing the possibilities. Brought to you by the North Dakota Petroleum Foundation. Mopro Guide Service, the best on Lake Oahe. Brent and his staff will give you the most enjoyable fishing experience, always having the latest in electronics, gear, and the most comfortable Lund boat on the water. Fish with somebody who lives in Mobridge, South Dakota, the heart of Lake Oahe. If you need a place to stay, the Morest Motel has newly updated rooms with free internet, a family-owned and operated business. Go to oahewalleyes.com. That's O-A-H-E walleyes.com for the best fishing experience Lake Oahe has to offer. Rockin' 7W has all the panels you need. Freestanding panels, windbreak panels, feeder panels, and the original protester panel. If you don't know what that is, it's a sort panel that makes sorting calves from a cow a breeze. You can do it in a fraction of time with just one person on foot or horseback. You can custom order sizes to fit your current operation, or you can start from scratch. Rockin' 7W also does trailer repair on any size trailers, mobile welding, and custom cattle hauling. Call Justin at Rockin' 7W at 701-206-1030. That's 701-206-1030. Rockin' 7W, the farmer and rancher's go-to guy. Western Frontier Insurance. Agents that understand you, your needs, and the community. Whether you're looking for coverage on your farm, ranch, home, or auto, you can trust that Western Frontier Insurance will find you a combination of price and coverage that works for you. No fancy jingles, no talking boxes or animals, just good neighbors helping to keep you covered. Western Frontier Insurance. Offices in Hazen, Washburn, and Wilton. Join Pfeiffer's Auctioneers for the annual Upper Midwest Equipment Auction. This online auction begins to close on December 8th at Pfeiffer's.com and features livestock and hay equipment, semi-trucks and trailers, exceptional construction equipment with low-houred payloaders, skid steers, excavators, and more. And this premier Pfeiffer's Auction showcases an uncomparable offering of like-new case, Kubota, and versatile tractors from 150 to 550 horsepower, some with less than 100 hours. Full inventory details and online bidding is available at Pfeiffer's.com. 
Our outdoor heritage is important to North Dakotans, and the state's oil and natural gas industry is advancing the possibilities for conservation. The North Dakota Outdoor Heritage Fund receives up to $40 million per biennium from oil and natural gas taxes. The industry is reclaiming land for future generations, and it's developing our state's natural resources in harmony with our great outdoors and wildlife. North Dakota Oil and Natural Gas, advancing the possibilities. Brought to you by the North Dakota Petroleum Foundation. Dakota Community Bank and Trust provides egg loans for all stages of growth, from seed to harvest. Our expert agribusiness lending staff specializes in loans for livestock, equipment, vehicles, and operating. With our roots in agribusiness lending, you can be assured that our lending staff will provide you with prompt and reliable service. In other words, our egg loan officers will always keep your best interests in mind. Stop by your local Dakota Community Bank and Trust today. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Welcome back, everybody. Dakota Prairie Outdoors, Saturday edition continues. I'm Scott Bachmeyer. Good to have you along. 888-932-5682 is the toll-free number. Questions, comments, concerns, want to talk a little bit. You can also text me at 701-425-6651. And, uh, hey, don't forget about the Polaris Egg Advantage Action Motorsports on the Strip Mandan, North Dakota. Uh, I tell you what, Britt and the crew and Steve and all those guys, they have 10% off. If you're a farmer or rancher, go on in. If you're looking to update into a Ranger, General, Sportsman, uh, 10% off right away here. You can get up to two-year warranty on any of these Rangers, Generals, and Sportsman models here. And it's only at the Polaris Egg Advantage. You bet. To the end of the year. you got a couple weeks left, and then that's going to go away. And thank you to the uh, NFR for uh, promoting that as well. Hey, let's talk a little bit. We have a lot of things going on today. Kevin Vaughn with Wild Walleye Outfitters. Good morning. He's with me on the second half of the program. How you doing, buddy? Good, Scott. How you doing today? Well, I'm doing well. I'm peeking out the window here, and it's a pretty frosty morning here for, for the Lazy Sea Cross Ranch. But, hey, I'm going to go through some of the coyote yeah, tournaments absolutely. that are going on right now, and then we're going to talk about your ice fishing tournament. We have a lot of stuff here. Uh, going on today is the fourth annual Dunn County Christmas for Kids Coyote Hunt. This is kind of a cool thing, Kevin. These guys, uh, uh, Dakota Predator Hunters guys, you can see they have some uh, television shows online and what have you. But they do this whole thing. I think last night they had 68 teams sign up for this coyote tournament. And they take a lot of the proceeds and they donate it to a lot of the kids who and families who probably can't afford Christmas gifts for the year. So uh, loving that. So that that's going on this like right now. One of my buddies is hunting that, and I don't know. We'll see how he does. Also going on today in South Dakota, the Cheyenne River Predator Hunters Classic Coyote Calling Contest at Curly Hall in Fort Pier. That's going on this weekend as well. Good luck to those folks. And uh, then coming up next weekend, the Randy Rohde 4th Annual Memorial Statewide Coyote Calling Contest. Uh, I believe that's going to be meeting at the Grey Goose Store in Pier, South Dakota. And then at the end of the month, the free youth hunting uh, coyote hunt and that's in long valley south dakota so quite a few of them going on here there's i have a, a stack of them kevin but let's talk about some ice fishing tournaments because this is i can't see how you're going to have an ice fishing tournament when two days ago you were on the open water with your boat how the heck are you going to get this done well <laughs> cross your fingers and hope it gets cold and stays cold fast here for the next two weeks uh, yeah yeah it uh Wednesday morning, we were out just slaying them in the boat. Lots of big fish. Uh, the bite was just phenomenal. I mean, 30 minutes into the trip, uh, we had both our overs into the live well, and I'd already landed eight or nine fish, and the guy fishing with me, it, you know, about the same. And, and yeah, it was, it was awesome. But that water is, you know, it's right at that 33 degree mark. Uh, it's, it's just been waiting for, days like yesterday and today and nights like that so it could freeze up hard and some of the back bays were skimmed over real good so it ain't going to take a lot of cold weather for us to start putting on some ice now it's going to take some good cold weather to get some 
good safe ice out yeah. there so we can have the tournament. Uh, one thing that you mentioned that we got to clarify, you say you had your overs. Now in South Dakota, there's certain lakes, uh, certain waters that uh, you can only keep one over 20 inches. Is that that's uh, is that correct or how does that work? Yeah, so like up on Orman, which is different than any other lake in South Dakota, uh, you can keep fish that are uh, under 15 inches or over 18 inches. Okay. Now, now pretty much the rest of the state, it's 15 to uh, 15 to 20, and then one over 20. Right. Right. There's certain, and that, and that's because they trying to keep the bigger fish down there is what they're doing, right? I mean. Well, actually, it's uh, it's kind of more of a uh, a breeding program there up at Ormond. Uh, them fifteen to eighteen inch fish are some of your best egg layers. And uh, when I talked to the game warden Bill Eastman about this whole thing, uh, oh, I think it's been about two years ago. I had a long talk with him, and he told me that since they've been doing it this way, that Ormond is now off the stocking list and. They don't have to stock it with walleye anymore. They uh, they stock the other two big lakes in western South Dakota, but but uh, they don't stock Ormond like they used to have to. That's good, though. I mean, uh, if you can have a self-sufficient walleye hatch each and every year, you'd rather do that than spend the money on stocking all the time, wouldn't you? Yeah, and it, I mean, and not just that, but 90% of the time you can go out to Ormond and catch fish now. Being able to keep fish all the time might not work out, but you can catch a lot of them 15 to 18 inches that you have to throw back. And and it's a great time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Do you ever, from Lake to Lake in South Dakota, there's always a few little changes. I know there's some trophy lakes up by like that Webster area. And you have to be on top of the rules and regulations depending on where you're fishing. Do you think that uh, is uh, sometimes, uh, a little confusing maybe for some folks uh well you know for the most part the rules and regulations across the state are about the same uh slight variances but you know that's that's where your fishing books come in handy and when you buy your license pick up a fishing book and you know read it that's <laughs> that simple that's easy it just, as that. don't get any simpler yeah yeah well, let's talk about your ice fever tournament uh, if you don't get enough ice, you can still have a tournament. I mean, people can still drop their boats in there and claim their ice fishing, can't you? Well, <laughs> except for I think there's only a handful of people that haven't winterized their boats for the year. I'm seeing a lot of <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of posts and comments that I shouldn't have winterized my boat yet. So. Yeah, but. Uh, no, uh, we're going to have the tournament on uh, January 2nd, and if by, you know, New Year's, or, yeah, New Year's, you know, December 31st, there, December 30th, if there ain't over six inches of ice, we'll wait until the following weekend on sure. January 9th, and if we don't have six inches of ice by then, then, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to refund everybody's money, and everybody that did sign up and send in the application for the tournament this year is going to be guaranteed a spot for next year. Good deal. Do you have a limit on how many teams that you're taking in? Uh, 55 teams, what we're taking in. We've got about 15, 16 teams signed up right now. Uh, I think everybody's real hesitant to, to come sign up just because of the, the warm weather. But I say, uh, if you get signed up and, and everything, uh, you know, and we don't have the tournament, you get your money back and it guarantees you a spot for next year. And, and, and then we go from there and just, you know, I'm just hoping we can fish a good tournament because I you know the bite's been really, really awesome this fall. We've been catching a lot of fish. We're not marking big bait schools up there. So I think we're going to have a really, really good ice here this year, which will be, great because the first two years i've done this tournament you know it's been we haven't had the best of a ice fishing bite up there but Mm -hmm. uh yeah you know we're just we're just hoping we can uh have a good tournament now when you set up this ice fishing tournament a lot of places do it differently 
Uh, are you going to have pre-designated uh, spots where these, uh, where the, you can go, or are you going to just let it open to wherever they want to drill a hole? Anywhere you want to drill a hole. We have a rules meeting at 6.30 on the boat dock at 7 o'clock. We have a shotgun start, and, and you go where, wherever you want. Just uh, The only, only real big rule is, you know, uh, we got people that, Set up, uh, set up early, set up shack, stuff like that. Yeah. Drill their holes. We have no problem with that. I'll be doing it myself, but we just ask that you don't drop a bait in the water until seven o'clock after the shotgun start, you know? Yeah. Uh, we're not, uh, I don't know. It's a fun tournament. We're not a big tournament. We're not giving away hundred thousand dollars of prizes. Uh, <laughs> you know, I just want people, you know, a lot of guys ask for, for tournaments up there and like fishing a tournament on Ormond and there was one. So uh I was asked if I would if I would be willing to, to do one and I uh I guess here we are today and that was two years ago. <laughs> so you're gonna do the so, uh so the limit is three wall, I believe, right? Three or four. Uh so the wall or the limit up here on walleye is four a person. Okay. And the way I'm going to do it is you will only weigh in your top seven fish. You won't weigh in all eight. So Okay, top seven. We, yeah, we, we put a limit on, on how many you can weigh in. And that just, that's just so with that many people on the water and, and you know, everybody is catching fish, we're not just pulling that just tons and tons of fish out of there yeah. to, to weigh in for the tournament, you know. And you still got to go by the rules of, uh, you know, uh, the size of the fish, one over 20, and the rest have to be under that 15, oh. right? Yep, yep, yep. Any any illegal fish brought in, you know, uh, you're know, you disqualified from the tournament. And, and you know, if it's, if it's real close, you know, we, it just put it back. <laughs> yeah. It's that simple. It's, yeah. it's not worth it. It's not worth the hundred dollar fine, the two hundred dollar fine that, that you're going to get from the game board, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said, and you're not you're not going to win enough money to to justify it. <laughs> <laughs> so I see on your rules here it says uh, uh, you're going to have a big fish, an odd fish. What what do you mean by odd fish? Are we can we can bring in other uh, species besides just walleye? Yeah, So. Uh, you know, big fish, obviously, that's biggest walleye of the day, heaviest walleye. We go by weight, not length. And then uh, odd fish is just the biggest fish that's not a walleye that we weigh in. Last year, I believe it was a nine and a half, ten pound catfish. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Good deal. So even if you don't catch a single walleye the whole day, you might catch that one fish that might give you a little bit of money back anyway. Yeah, and that's. Uh, you know, that's about a two hundred dollar paycheck for the day. You know, mm-hmm. uh, that'll buy some. That'll, yes, that'll buy some beers. That's right. It sure will. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, this year we've got uh, we're going to do gift bags, and we've been working working hard on getting door prizes and stuff like that put together, and and all of that. I mean, we've we put a lot of work into really trying to make this a good tournament this year. And, you know, a lot of it don't work if, if people don't get signed up because mm-hmm. we take some, of uh, we take some of that entry money and we go buy door prizes and stuff like that. And, and so, and I'm sure, yeah, you know, folks listening right now, I mean, if, uh, if you want to donate something, I'm sure you'd be open for that. Wouldn't you? I would absolutely love it. Uh, you know, I've been trying and trying to do more and more every year with this. Uh, eventually, we'd like to do sweatshirts, uh, stuff like that, you know. But it, uh, I'm, I'm one person, and it takes a lot to put <laughs> one of these on. Uh, you know, I got Jan from up at the Wheel In Bait Shop. Uh, absolutely amazing. She has helped me with so much. Uh, she helped me make a, a lot of a window. Well, she made all the window decals this year for uh, for the gift bags. And, and she just does so much throughout the year to just 
give me a hand and help me with stuff and ideas. I mean, you just, you couldn't ask for a better lady up there. And, you know, uh, Troy, Troy Zellweger from Newell, he, uh, he volunteered and stepped up last year and, and he's been helping me put up flyers and get door prizes. And, uh, James Trimble here from Sturgis, he's been helping me, uh, you know, he's donating him and his friend. They're going to engrave a couple trophies this year and a couple mugs for, you know, trophies for first place. And then they're making me some mugs for uh, fourth pr- fourth place engraved mugs. And, and he helps me a lot with the computers. And I mean, if, if it wasn't for him, yeah, I don't know what you'd be clicking when you clicked on the application. And I don't know where it would send you. <laughs> <laughs> It takes a whole you know, bunch of people, doesn't it, to uh, get in there and, t- it, and make sure it's done the correctly. And it's a lot of work and uh, good for you being able to uh, step up and do that for a lot of folks. Yeah, you know, it, and it's 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 been a pleasure. It's been a whole lot of fun, you know, just watching the tournament grow and seeing the people come out year after year, and getting to know them a lot better and, and talking with them and, you know, at the at the awards ceremony there, that's kind of changed over the last couple of years, how we've done it. But, you know, just getting to stand around and talk with other guys about ice fishing. Some, you know, guys that that are just as crazy about it as me, you know, just absolutely love it. And it's, I don't know, it's been a real blessing. It's been awesome. Good deal. Well, I tell you what, Kevin, if people want to maybe get some more information or even give you a call or enter this ice fishing tournament, Give us the information that we need to do this. Okay, so if you want to send in an application, go on Facebook and look up Wild Walleye Outfitters and look for the third annual Wild Walleye Ice Fever Tournament uh, application. Print it out. You and your partner sign it. Put your phone number on it. You put a $65 check in there and you mail it to me when I get the... uh, when I get the application and check, uh, I've been trying to call everybody and, and let them know that they're in. It's been extremely busy around here. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a deer hit the pickup, and <laughs> so we've been <laughs> we've been crazy busy. But uh, you know, to try and let you know that you're in right away. Uh, otherwise, just uh, call me at one six zero five. Five one nine four two eight six, and uh, you know if I don't answer, leave me a voicemail, and I'll call you back. Any questions you have, or you know if you want to even just you know later in the year you want to come up to Lumen and go fishing, yeah, and you're not sure about the ice, give me a call. Uh, I'm gonna try and start doing a little bit more stuff on Facebook, like. Uh, weekly ice reports and maybe a little fishing report on how we're doing up there. Or maybe if we go to a different lake, how we're doing there on the, Good deal. on the Facebook page. You know, it's just, like I said, I'm, I'm not very good with computers and stuff like that. And the last thing I usually think of is, Oh, well, I should take pictures or do something <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> you know, well, you got to get with the program, Kevin, you got to uh, get into it and, you know, have all your groupies following you around and all that good stuff. So, but hey, well, I appreciate you coming on here on a Saturday. I'm uh, we're up against the clock here for another day. So thank you, sir. And I'll uh, make sure to keep uh, pushing this tournament here for the next couple of weeks. We'll see if we can get some more people signed up for you. Thanks a lot, Scott. I appreciate you having me on. You have a wonderful day and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. As as to you too. Thanks a lot, Kevin. You have yourself a good day as well. But you bet. Kevin Vaughn, Wild Walleye Outfitters, the third annual Ice Fever Tournament, January 2nd, coming up your way. And I'll tell you what, I think I might have to see if I can find a partner to go down and do that. I, all I need is somebody who has all the uh, shacks and everything. Hey, very quickly, before we let, uh, let you go here for today, a few more of the coyote tournaments coming up around the area. We went through the free youth coyote tournament that's going to be in Long Valley, South Dakota, December 26th and 27th. How about this? Drake Fire Department is having a coyote and pheasant hunt January 2nd. Two-man teams, $100 a team, registration, and the Friday, January 1st at Morris Bar in Drake. In January 9th, it is the Garrett... Houghton Benefit Coyote Hunt and Chili Cook-Off. You can do both. You can do one or the other. 
but yeah, pretty cool. Uh, Riley Schriefer's kind of spearheading a lot of this. Rose meeting is going to be the night before at Fairby Shop. And uh, that's just outside of Halliday, two miles north on Highway 8. And then 0.4 miles west is uh, how that goes. The 19th annual North Dakota Coyote Classic is going to be on January 9th in Dickinson, North Dakota. Go to coyotehunter.net for more information on that. 2E Fabrication Predator Hunt, January 8th and 9th. This is going to be out of Sanborn, North Dakota. The 2021 Northwood Men's Club Coyote Hunt and Raffle is going to be January 15th and 16th. Let's see here. The Knights of Columbus Coyote Hunt is going to be coming up your way, and that's going to be on January 22nd. Reynolds Coyote Hunt is January 23rd, and that's uh, going to be coming up in Reynolds, North Dakota. The 2021 Wright and Family Coyote Hunt, February 6th in Cooperstown, North Dakota. The Brandon Colstead Memorial Coyote Hunt in Cheyenne, North Dakota, going to be coming up your way. Hey, the Bison Volunteer Fire Department tournament is going on today. And also, don't forget about the uh, Harding County, Buffalo, South Dakota, Harding County uh, two-day hunt. That's going to be December 19th and 20th. So there you go. That's what's happening. Thanks for listening today. Have yourself a great one. Eat some meat. Drink some milk. See ya. All right, the radio stations, thank you so much. Have yourself a good day. And YouTube, you also. Thank you for tuning in here today. If you have any other uh, tournaments coming up your way, please make sure to send them my way. Have a good day.